is Officer Dan. Today we're going to be installing my S1 sequential shifter. Now this isn't a sequential gearbox, rather this turns your normal gearbox into a sequential pattern, which is pretty awesome. So follow along as we toss this puppy in. Huge thanks to Scotty Fox and Heritage Driven for helping me smash this video out. Of course, S1 for making such an awesome product. This particular S1 is the T56 Magnum version, but check their site for other models to suit your transmission. Now, first things first, read the instructions before you install, as this video isn't an end-all be-all, but I will be going over some of the intricacies of actually getting this thing installed properly. First, let's get familiar with all of the parts needed for install, starting with the shaft fitting, then the shift knob adapter, the drill square, the reverse lockout cover, the optional shift indicator, which I highly, highly recommend, that also comes with the shift sensor, the base plate spacer, as well as the base plate itself. You also get the shifter and a few bags of hardware that I'll go over in just a few. This is the best way I found to actually shift it off of the car. Brace yourself against the bench as you will need to put this thing into neutral, which is all the way forward with the selector down. And this is how it will look once it's all installed and we get it in the car. Just wanted the visual reference for when it was out. And that's basically it. Now we are installing this in car, so you'll need to adapt this to however you're installing it. The best way would be to get everything fitted outside the car, just so you know how it works, then put it in. Start off by removing the stock shift plate. Next, you're gonna remove the factory electronic reverse lockout and fit the supplied cover with sealant. We actually just took this thing apart and put it back in, but you can also use this plate right here. Now you may have to drop your exhaust to get to this next part, which is the shift rod plunger. In one of the hardware bags, you'll find a replacement nut for this. So once you've finagled the old one out, which is this thing right here, then pop the new one in. Once those two things are out, remove the plastic bushings, whichever way you see fit. We used a pick and it worked pretty well, just like you see here. Now this next part wasn't in the instructions, but we did it anyway. We installed the needed hardware to the shaft fitting, then we shaved down both of the bolts on the bottom to make sure they wouldn't cause any problems later. Nice and flush. This next part is a bit tricky, but with the help of some duct tape, it's not so bad. The tape also keeps you from losing hardware into your transmission. You have to feed the base retainers through and get them centered. Now, once both of them are lined up, you can install the shaft fitting as shown here. It is supposed to fit tight and sanding may be required, just don't take off too much. Toss some Loctite on the bolts, then tighten those suckers on down. Once those are tight, Apply a thin layer of silicone and then install the base plate using the countersunk bolts from the hardware bags. A better way to do this is to line it up and pin everything first, then go back and put the silicone on. Now smooge out some more of that silicone sealant and make a thin layer around the small metal gasket that goes in between the base plate and the actual shifter itself. Then slap that sucker on in, just make sure all the holes line up properly and you don't want to move it around too much. So once it's set, forget it. Now this needs to be installed here. So make sure it's in neutral, pop the ball down, tilt the blue plate up as far as it can go, then slide the ball into the slot in the blue plate. Then set the shifter all the way in. Next, we're gonna install the longer bolt square washers in the drill square. Now, don't tighten these down all the way just yet, as the hard part is to come. Now we had to modify just a bit and use a shorter bolt on the front left corner, that one, and there should be three others that do fit just fine. You will now need to make millimeter adjustments to get the shifting just right. If you're having issues getting into odd gears, move it forward just a little bit. If you can't get it into even gears, move it backwards. For us, it wanted to be over as far to the left as possible. Now make sure to test the car in the air with the engine on, going through each gear and then back down into neutral and finally reverse. Now 
Now all that's left is to drill the holes and hammer down the dowel pin so it does not move around, and if you ever do need to take it off, it'll go right back into the same place. Now, tighten everything back down for the last time, put any stickers you may or may not need to put on, and it's time to go shred some laps with some buddies. I sure do love this shifter. 